Hey, this is Ricky Wilcox, and we're live with Neil. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and introduce you to Ricky Wilcox, a man of many talents, singing drummer, uh, guitar player, songwriter, and all-around cool dude. Uh, he's been a resident of Tampa for a long time, and I've been circling around in the same waters in our band uh, Frenzy down there in the 80s, 90s, until today. Um, I, hell, when I come back, I know, I know I'll be playing some good music and recording with some of my old friends. I look forward to it big time. This COVID is, has all of us sitting at home. would be a perfect time to do it. I can't come down to see you guys because, you know, they have the uh, quarantine here in Jersey. So I'm just hanging out. And so tell me, what have uh, you been doing since the whole COVID crisis came down? I have been uh, sitting around <laughs> in my house trying to avoid people. Yeah. Um, I last gig was on March 18th, and uh, you know I miss uh, playing. I miss my band. I miss all my uh, friends. I miss uh, hugging people. And hell yeah, man! I'm a prime schmoozer. I like. Hugging and Me too, things. man. And, you know, it's like you can't do the schmooze unless you give somebody a hug, you know? Kissing people, you know, it's just Absolutely. sort of like, and, um, it's counterintuitive to the way I'm wired. So uh, <laughs> we've been laying low and take little trips. Uh, and um, I have been, uh, we, we moved into a new house in St. Pete, an old house. And uh, so we've, had plenty of projects to keep us busy sort of uh, over the couple of months here. And uh, if I turn the camera around, you can see the kitchen, which is we ripped all the countertops off. And, and all right. We don't have a sink, you know, fun oh, stuff. Man. Yeah, yeah, you're in that state of flux. <laughs> it's, it's the new rock and roll, I like to call it, you know. Oh, yeah. We're all sitting here doing this kind of thing. And uh, I've been doing a lot of the same, you know, a lot of good things have happened to me because of this. Um, you know, learning how to record remotely with people I love and, uh, can't get together with, like you say, do the hang. I was talking to George Harris and, you know, we plan to try and I was thinking a month or so ago about trying to get a bunch of people over at George's place and yeah. just interviews like in a big group that way. Cause we've all the Venn diagram, you know, there's probably, we probably have family we've you know appropriated between us. There's a huge Venn diagram. I'm sure the circles have crossed at some point. Yes, they're pretty damn big. The, even the thought of it, I'm up to 160 people to interview for the book. Wow. In the first do half a dozen were really rough. I had a mistake I could make, I've made. And I keep making them every time. But like now, the fact that you and I can, we're talking, we can hear each other. There's no um, digital fuckery going on anywhere. It's pretty painless, man. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty cool. And cheap, too, man. The fact that I can call you and you don't even have it loaded, I just dig the hell out of that. Well, I, actually, I did I did end up loading it because it it prompted me to, so I just did. And cool. So now I have it. Have you been using this time? What have you been doing other than taking care of the house and any projects you've started in your mind, new songs? Um, <clears throat> I've been uh, more trying to... Uh, accumulate the whole back catalog basically uh, of, mm -hmm. of uh, recorded stuff a bunch of dt stuff that i've got um i got sent uh, like a live like a video of us in 1988 at club detroit and stuff like all that. all right I, I love that place <laughs> so uh you know if those walls could talk but uh and my whole back catalog um back through 1980 basically and I'm trying to figure out how to get that all re-available. And mm -hmm. um, uh, so the last new thing I did was trying to remix a couple things from uh, my last uh, solo record, mm -hmm. which is now a couple years old. Um, I don't have the means to really, I can do demos at home and stuff, which I've got about a hundred ideas down as, as right. little like, 40 second demos. And then- Right, uh, right. I, without the with Werrell to uh, or wherewithal to uh, <laughs> actually get them into total songs, you know? So right. uh, it'll come at some point, but um, you know, for me, it's always been easier when you're out there and you have a vehicle for it to, right. uh, to just churn the stuff out, you know? And that's, that's why DT was a, a, a perfect vehicle for that. 
Because, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, we just, there's a little competition. Everybody was a great songwriter. Right. You could write anything as a drummer in that band. I could write any part, a part I couldn't execute on guitar. Right. Not have to worry about it because it was going to get executed. You know, um, right. it was a really a pretty perfect storm for absolutely you 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 guys were always highly entertaining and um you know i just dug the band you know over the years i bump into you guys and stand there and i'm like oh man these guys are great fun (laughs) you know yeah we were talking earlier about um drummer dna (laughs) Uh, just wiring and uh let's talk about that a little bit tell me what you think is uh what is it about drummers that is just um it's like all the stories about bass players, you know, they're always stoic. And, and it seems so, it's not always. I mean, I've had some maniacal people in my band that break every stereotype you could imagine. But like, sure. what do you think it is about how we're wired as drummers? Why are we all such uh, what is it about that secret savoir faire that we have as drummers? Why are we the way we are? You know, I took a I started off on piano lessons in the fifth grade and um I was in the fifth grade. I didn't want to sit down and practice every day, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. So when the opportunity came up to play drums in the little elementary school band, mm-hmm. I was like, hey, mom and dad, I want to switch, you know, over to the drums because I just figured, oh, you don't have to rehearse on drums. And <laughs> it me out of, you know, I get to bang things and stuff. And, um, uh, you know, I... I was falling in love with music. Uh, it was the 60s. It was the middle of the 60s. You know, obviously, the, the British invasion, even before that, with the Motown stuff, I loved the uh, Broadway stuff. And, and my parents had introduced to us as kids, uh, you know. So playing drums was kind of a easier path for me. And then, as mm-hmm. it turned out, I was kind of a natural at it. So, right. you know, I just it became my my first love and uh you know i as far as dna goes i know that eventually after you know being a a road dog and playing drums on the road for 20 straight years or whatever the one thing i would always say to people is is that drummers are usually pretty mellow Mm -hmm. because they beat the shit out of the drums all night long and it gets all your aggressions out, sweat right. it out. And I, you know, I was a sweaty workhorse and, uh, yes. you know, but then I was good, man. I was mellow and, and mm-hmm. uh, happy. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, I had my other problems, but it, other than that, I think as far as the DNA goes, uh, you have to, you got it or you don't, you know, everybody brings their own little special, uh, uniqueness to that DNA, whatever it is. I mean, I guess that's the essence of, of uh, right. The DNA, you know, I, you know, I think the whole practicing thing, um, it was never a chore for me at all. I, I just dug it. I, I've had bands. I started playing when I was like eight or nine and, uh, I've been doing it ever since. It's like, I don't know what I would do without it. Um, you know, I had right. a real bad accident last year and was hospitalized for several months. And it just sucks. You know, when you have something like that happen, uh, in fact, the only thing kept me from going nuts is I got some iPad apps to play in the hospital making music with certain uh, apps. Like a lot of shit that I just was experimenting with apps to see what they do. Sure, you yeah. so bloody bored, man. Uh, like you, I have a, a vast, I love all kinds of shit. And uh, it can be strange, it can be new. I mostly really dig original bands with passionate people. Um, Cause I think that's what the, what, what do you attribute your band, um, your staying power over the years? You guys were obviously good friends. Um, and you played together. So it was the cohesion. I could always tell that you, you had what it takes. Even before DT, I was in a lot of really good bands around the country and in Chicago expressly, uh, I was in a band up there with some really well-known people and two of the members of that band ended up being in cheap trick. They ended up being the Tom Peterson replacement. Tom Peterson. Okay. They, and, uh, that was, uh, Pete and John. And I was in a band with them in Chicago. I was in two bands with them in Chicago. Right. And uh, the band that I was in uh, right before uh, the whole thing with Cheap Trick happened was uh, we actually had uh, Blackstone, Arkansas's manager. Right. And so we went down to the ranch, and I got to meet Tommy Aldridge, who was All in right. Arkansas at the time. And it was a drummer story. Okay, cool. So, 
went down and I hung out with him. He drove me around his Ferrari. He already had a lot of money. And um, this, this is pre white snake and, and all that stuff. You know, right. he was a great guy. He showed me he had these new five drums. He just got shipped in from Germany and he put the floor Tom on its side and jumped up on it. And he's like, look at this fucker. You know, it's like <laughs> and budge, you know? Right. So, anyway, that was cool. But then we went back to Chicago and a couple months later, I got replaced by him in the band. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, if you got to get great, replaced by somebody, at that's least a great a, guy. I mean, that's a great story. Drummer that, uh, you know, and, uh, I was devastated at the time, but I, I went back to Ohio and, and, uh, uh, got my old singer and, and who had had a similar path up in Chicago. And we went back up and we had a band called the Cincinnati bombers for a couple of years. And, and, uh, that was, uh, you know, went back up and, and kept doing it and stuff. And so, and then I did talk to John Brandt recently and he said, uh, that, uh, the guys in Cheap Trick said that they always like me better in, in our old band than Tommy anyway. So I was yeah. like, <laughs> that's funny. You're probably just making that up, but you hey, know, man, you know what? It's always nice. So, you know, all the people we meet, like if we have that kind of experience of bands, like being in a family and it never really goes away. Even it's like having a, a brother, you'd go, Oh man, I'm disappointed or something. But you stay, yeah. you still love them. It's like your family, and that's hard to get out of if you've really been with friends a long time. It's a right. So that band um, was called uh, Thumbs, and uh, you can Google it, and um, uh, they're kind of legendary in Chicago. So uh, that was what are they called again? Could you say it again? Duh Thumbs, D apostrophe Thumbs. Okay, I'll have to so, check them out. I look forward to it. Big yeah. thumb. Well, cool. So um, anyway, on to DT. You were saying, you know, it, 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 I think that just became where I became comfortable as a songwriter for the first time and had right. uh, Casey and I had already been working together for a couple of years in a, a band called the theater band, which uh, uh, we had an actual record deal and a record out and a, a small label up in Michigan. Um, a manager didn't try too hard to get us signed, but it was a really good band and uh, it was really strong uh, power pop material. Right. Uh, so uh, we'd had that experience under our belt and we're already doing like, you know, big shows up there with, because we had a record deal and stuff and we opened for right. Lee, Rick Springfield. So Casey and I were already really tight, you know, right. And uh, about six months after he started Dolores telescope, after we had both taken a uh, left, the theater band for certain reasons, uh, they, they asked me to join Dolores telescope. And so they, we were together for, another 15 years, <laughs> you right. know, and through various bass players and incarnations and stuff. But, uh, for a while there, uh, it was, um, it was a, just a really, uh, just a stew pot of, uh, originality and creativity and, and, uh, um, yeah, for the most part, a very enjoyable creative process. And we worked a lot with George Harris. You, you mentioned him before. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's an amazing person and, and wonderful. Absolutely producer and co-contributor and stuff so yeah right. man it was perfect it was perfect for me to be able to be amongst those guys who were both great singers great mm -hmm. players steve's right. actually was a guitar player an amazing r&b kind of guitar player and you know and we would switch instruments sometimes and uh, Does, uh, um, you know, who, who, who played bass with you for the longest period of time stevie stevie for sure. and, and um yeah. He he sang. Uh, that's interesting. He was a good funky kind of guitar player too. That that's always good in any songwriting environment. If you have a couple of real strong singers and writers, and and I do it a lot. Like I I, I write a tune a day, but sometimes they're real shit. But sometimes you get those four chords, and you get or you get the vocal thing started, and you get to the chorus and have it. And I can always right. get more vocals vocals if I can get the intro, the you know the vocal uh, eight bars. And or 16 bars of lyrics and a bridge, I can hand it off to g great people who play. Like, I was just talking to Jerry Outlaw today because um, we've been friends forever. Yeah. Uh, can you see this? Uh, this band picture here is my first original band. I was actually put this band together uh, around near the, uh, the end days of DT, but that's Jerry and myself and George Bernardo. You probably right. know as well, D Force drummer, okay. uh, and a bass player named Reese Smith. And that was a band called Soupy. 
And oh, uh, I remember that. I, actually, it's so funny. It rings a bell now. I remember that band. So that was my first foray into uh, having my own band at the end of uh, uh, DT. I just, uh, you know, we wrote so many songs that it's hard to even believe, but the, we wrote so many songs that everybody had a bunch of extra material and we were doing like little solo projects of our own. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the band would, even while we were putting out our own, our own uh, projects. And so, uh, you know, that was a, uh, that was great experience for me. And Jerry is, you know, just one of the, the best, best human players. He just, absolutely. You know, we're really old friends. He would come out, uh, he would come out and would, like Matt Laporte when, when they were like right. kids and come to like Mr. Joe's and uh, get up and jam with us back in the day. And uh, they actually had their first Zappoween was at Mr. Joe's and with uh, on a DT night, you know. Oh, no kidding. I've, I've spent many a night on the floor there. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, well, that's great. Um, you know, there's like you said, George Harris, man, he's another just supreme human being and uh, all around cool dude. And just, uh, you know, his wife is they're just great folks. And, uh, you know, for me, as long as I have a bunch of good people around and we all love each other and we like to hang and, you know, we have everybody that I know that makes records. That we have all kinds of talents that we don't even do in our own band because we have a certain thing that we follow in that band. And it's nice to have enough friends when you write a song, you go, perfect part for this person. But it's good to have that friends around who you can go, is this any good? What do you think of it? If you have the right friends when it sucks, they'll tell you, you know, it sucks. But I, here's what I think you could do with it. So right. where do you see, you see yourself? Are you going to be a lifer in this? Uh, sure. I don't see any reason to think otherwise. I mean, I, uh, I, uh, I, mean, I wrote a song about it. And, uh, oh, okay called guys like you and me and it basically uh you know guys like us will never change we'll rock until our dying day oh i yeah. have to hear that one i really i gotta hear that who do you admire in the tampa music scene presently other than the people we've mentioned uh any up and coming things that you see that you dig yeah i mean i'd be remiss to not mention steve conley because uh when oh, i yeah. when i started my uh the moon snakes after soupy and i i started a different band um and uh because I wanted to play my own stuff. And, and, you know, if you're writing stuff, it's hard to find a, somebody else to sing it, frankly. I mean, you know, yeah. so I'm like, well, I'll just go out and do it. Um, I had a medical issue playing drums that, that uh, we can talk about or not. But, uh, sure. you know, and, uh, Casey was had left town. And, uh, I thought, well, you know, about the next best guy I can think of to go to is Steve. And then we had some shared history that, uh, with him being in the headlights and, and uh, as much as we all played together and stuff. So I ended up, you know, recording three records with him as Ricky Wilcox and the moon snakes. And he was, uh, he's my right hand guy in the studio and, and everything. And, uh, very easy to work with it. it obviously one of the great guitar players, uh, you know, Oh yeah. And, he's and he's a monster. Like Absolutely. So, uh, and then, you know, we'll still, We'll still, well, now we're not, nobody's doing sh shit, but, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get, get back up there again. But I have my own integrated band as well, and, and uh, I'm, I feel very fortunate to have uh, uh, those guys too, you know. Tell so, me about your new project. Well, you mean uh, the Moon Snakes are, uh, now I've been in longer than uh, Dolores Telescope exists. Wow, that's great. That's great. You know, there's a turnover. We have kind of a, uh, people move on or, or I mean, we're sure. all not getting any younger and there's been some yeah. medical issues and stuff. So I've had uh, uh, Rick Boucher, who you probably know, yeah. the drummer yeah. from Betty's Not a Vitamin and, and many other bands. He was uh, the, uh, our drummer for a while. And uh, um, uh, now I got a guy named Alex Wolf Parnes who will tell you that he's not a drummer, but he's a great drummer. I think he's going to be a Very you know. cool. And uh uh, Jim Brown on bass and uh, an old Dolores Telescope uh, fan who we played at his high school uh, uh -huh. and his name's Jeff Graves and he's uh, uh, my guitar player now so uh -huh. I got it and they're great people and and uh, we uh, and actually Natty's husband Steve Steve Peak is uh plays keyboards with us whenever he can Nat too. Natty so, Moss yeah Natty Moss Bond so okay yeah Natty yeah she's, she, she's <laughs> excellent good people for sure um, definitely a sweetheart. 
Well, what what um what are your main guitars these days? You play your telly a lot. For my... I, I uh, I'm a telly guy, but um, about 20 years ago we started a band called the Shagwires, which was a, a British invasion band. Yeah, and we had a one night a week over at Stump Supper Club, and uh, Jimmy James was putting the band together, and uh, okay, Terry Berkey, the bass player, and I both uh, grown up in Cincinnati, and and we both played in, in the Michigan circuit together, and uh, right. we were really good friends. And he called me. He said, you got to come here right now. We need a fifth guy in the band. And I went out to the Ice Palace. It was still called that. And they were doing a duo at the hockey game. And I sat in. We played some Beatles stuff. And he goes, you're hired. You know? And I'm like, well, cool. And that was a really, really fun band. And uh, Tracy LaBarbera, where I met her, she was a, a keyboard player and singer. And uh, Mike Couch was a drummer. And, and all British Invasion stuff. And uh, so the, in that band, we had kind of a guitar deal with this uh, Phantom Works, it's called. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this dude from Porter Flash started a guitar company, and he had all the Vox copyrights. Oh, so right. We had brand new Vox copies that were literally. I, I've like, seen that guitar that you play. It, 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 it's so a I copy. Have a, I have the Phantom, and. Um, and I love that. And, and uh, um, you know, uh, of course, Jimmy got the cool Brian Jones teardrop, you know, but I was like, I, li I like my Phantom. It gets a lot of attention. It sounds good. Right. Like uh, so I still break that baby out, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, but I mean, the last couple of years, I've been doing more acoustic gigs and stuff than, than uh, and right. I never envisioned that happening. But that's the way life goes sometimes. At least I'm a. Uh, Right. Make it, you know, I can make a living playing music, so. Right. I'm trying to turn off my background music. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Here we are. I have an announcement about <coughs> COVID. It has finally reached the television station. We've been locked in for weeks, and so now I'm turning into a televangelist. These right. hands can heal. heal I, think you should, I think you should put your mask on, Neil. <laughs> right what would you tell any young person wants to get in the music biz like we did as young kids what would advice would you give them man things are so different now you know and i i don't have kids i i i'm not sure how relatable to them that i am other than i think that if you're a kid and your parents or maybe your grandparents you know to have their old record collection around or something that yeah Oh, they're pulling out the Matha Hoople and the, you know, the Stones and the and the Who and and of course right. you know the, the, the stuff that you're going to hear the, the Beatles and everything. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, Some kids don't even know who Paul McCartney is. It's it's funny to me, but all things pass, you know. Yeah, man. So you, you know, know, I think uh, I think if your parents uh, or your wherever you're living, if you you're raised in a music musical environment, right or maybe you discovered it on your own somehow with your buddies or your, you know, your friends or whoever, uh, right. You know, I would, I would tell them to, uh, you know, do something you love. I would probably not recommend doing what I did, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, I have no regrets. I had a great career. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm happy and fairly well adjusted. I think, you know, at this point, Absolutely. uh, and, uh, you know, I'm still out there, um, my friend Terry Berkey, who I mentioned, who, who we were in the Shaguar together, he's my lit partner in the Little Kings, which is my one of my workhorse duos. And we go out and we had all we had a lot of work. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Just COVID and it, he's on an upright bass and I'm playing acoustic and and uh, we still love that 60s stuff. And, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, um, I've been very fortunate to be able to do that and play with mm -hmm. my friend. I've got my band, which we don't get to play very much, but it's just always great to see those guys. It's kind of like, you know, you, you know, your little vacation, you get to go hang with your band and, and uh, yes. once every couple months and, and see the guys. And, and uh, I guess it's like card night for, for normal people or something, you know, you get to go play right. cards with buddies or something, but uh, sure. Uh, you know, and then, um, you know, I played, in a bunch of different other projects too. So there are certain guys around town who, are, who will still ask me to play drums. And Mark Warren is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. I joined the Vodka Knots for about a, you know, two oh, yeah, years. Okay. Uh, that was, um, and that, that got my chops right back up, you know, but I, sure. I don't know if you knew this, I have to play left footed now. Uh -oh. So 
uh, it was one of the big reasons why I did the switch that being that, and that, uh, as I always say, ain't no money playing drums. So if you're doing this full time, you know, you, you, yeah. you gonna have to make the leap at some point, but, uh, I worked with him and I, we've been in a couple different projects. I played with the, uh, the job site theater band a couple of times, not at the place, but at the, uh, at the benefit shows, right. um, with, and I love the theater people. Um, right. You know, we did a Photopia band mm -hmm. where we, uh, with uh, Mark Warren and myself and C.J. Martin on keys and Robert Wegman, you know. Oh, I love Robert. He's a great guy. I'm, I'm going to be talking to him in a couple of weeks. In fact, yeah. I have a song that I wrote, and as I was writing it, it's funny, I was just sitting here yesterday, and uh, I just wrote like a jangly Tom Petty song because I was sitting here, and it just struck me for the moment. You know, I had, I had my phone on and I had the lyrics in my head so I just picked it up and three chords later I have this idea you know I have the chorus I got a verse and I know right. I can write you know like I have like a, a, the first verses like I have like eight verses that are written they're good lyrics they popped into my head and I just wanted to capture them so I like you know, I have hundreds of things and laying around that you can come back and mine but I was thinking of Robert um, when I was sitting there playing it, I was like, you know, I love to have his high harmony with the, with the tunes to make it this very Beatlesque tune. He's the perfect guy for it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just a super talented guy, you know, in all fields. I mean, he's he's a cool dude in my book. Yeah, man, I, I've known him obviously forever. Kind of like, you know, going back into that uh, amazing scene that we had in the 80s uh, yeah. here and, and 90s. Uh, in, right. Uh, this whole region and Robert and I were neighbors back in the eighties over in Tampa. And we actually recorded a song that I just found the cassette of All right. these things I've been trying to get bumped over. You know, I think I'm finally getting comfortable enough where I can go up to like George or Steve and say, Hey, will you transfer this for me? Because right. I've got, you know, you can't see it. My old four track machine back here. And it's, okay, uh, I see it a little bit. Right. It's seen its better days, you know, uh, so you know I, what? If you can record on a cassette deck or anything, if you got the right song, it doesn't matter. You know, no, I mean, I, I mean, I I used to double shit like on a two track deck and bounce it, and you know, there's yeah, ways. I used, to, I used to be a master on that thing, and I actually even um, these last couple of records I did with Steve over the last couple of years, uh, sometimes I would do demos on that, and the compression on that machine is so cool. Yeah. That I would use those specific tracks and bounce them onto the, the main recording on a couple Oh, hell of yeah. Uh, just because, you know, they say, don't get, don't fall in love with your demos. Well, you know. Right. I think we all do a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, you got you happen to have a guitar sitting around? You want to play some? You're always looking good, man. All right, everybody. We got Ricky Wilcox we're talking to on Live with Neil. He's going to come up and Play us some damn fine sample music. Actually, it's just fine music, period. And uh, Ricky's going to show you how to do it. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, like having, I like having mics and effects and uh, yeah, right? bandmates, you know? Absolutely. So back in DT, Casey and I, we would always come up with uh, what we thought were funny song titles, and occasionally we would realize them. And One was... Uh, called I Like You Because You Look Like Me. And uh, it had to do with a, a certain band member seemingly being attracted to women that look kind of like he, him. <laughs> and, and, you know, you take that as it will. And then anyway, uh, uh, a couple years ago in the Moon Snakes, I just decided to get, run with the title. And so I, I wrote the song. And I'm trying to get my guitar in the picture here. but Oh, that's, I, you know... It sounds good over the over the uh, internet. All right, so. Oh, I like you because you look like me. Two peas in the pile, I think that someone agrees. I like you because you look like me. And you like me cause I look like you Air of green and I'm a blue You like me cause I look like you Birds of a feather stick together Know that 
some don't agree with me, you see, but we could brave most stormy weather together. I like you, cause you look like me. Hey, I like you, cause you look like me. The people are part of it, some of them believe. I like you, cause you look like me. I like you, cause you look like me. Birds of a feather stick together. I know that some don't agree with me, you see, but oh, we could break more stormy weather together. Oh, I like you, because you look like me. Are you like me? Cause I look like you. It's true, I do. Are you like me? Cause I look like you. man very nice nice tune ricky yeah silly little song you know <laughs> well um you know it's been great talking to you i, I probably come up with another two hours of talking just uh because we could but um you know i i appreciate you coming on very much for one thing and uh i've been talking to our friend jane mckee of course about getting a show together down there so i hope right. you'll uh, be one of the people who join us who knows man i might even ask casey tomorrow if uh have a dt reunion at the uh tampa, tampa history thing yeah Every you know night. there's uh there's uh plenty of dt on uh youtube but at my uh 60th birthday we did a reunion at uh the hideaway and uh okay you know a couple years ago uh there's plenty of stuff to see for people who are even remember dt you know but right. uh there's a lot of weird stuff on youtube you can mine it uh well okay well uh Everybody, we've been listening and talking to Ricky Wilcox, uh, the Bone Crusher. By the way, wh how, who gave you that name? So, remember Casey's Cove in Tampa. I sure do. <laughs> and then sure you guys there, too. We were, uh, DT was playing there one night, and that was one of our uh, big party plays. I mean, it, we had a lot of fun there and uh, a lot of friends. But uh, completely sober, I walked off the stage there, and there's there's about a foot drop off from the stage and they had a big light show out front the old park hands and right temporarily blinded and i tripped <sighs> and i put my arm down to break my fall and uh i cracked my wrist and and uh i didn't know it i go man it's killing me you know but it, it, i went back up to play the second set by like the third song i'm you know, i'm screaming at casey play a ballad man play a ballad man i can't i can't yeah, my left yeah. arms don't work. My left wrist not working, and uh, so I had to leave and go to the hospital. And I so I actually broke a bone that night, and that they dubbed me the Bone Crusher, which was kind of a sounded like a the killer drummer name or, or wrestler. Oh hell yeah, or it is you know? great. Well, so that's well, how that happened. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Crusher. And um, hey man, I'd like to mention. Yes, I have a website, RickyWilcox.com. It's chock full of music and pictures and more history than you'd care to read about, but I just want to put it out there. So, All right. RickyWilcox.com, everybody. Check him out. And you know what? Get off your stingy ass and buy some, man. Send him a buck. <laughs> he, you know, we, we, he's going to get a third of a penny, man. You could make his day. It would be so <laughs> cool. <laughs> hey, man, thank you very much. And everybody thank watching and live with Neil. Thanks, brother. All right, Take brother. care. Take care, I man. Appreciate I'll it. see you soon.